I'm Claire McIntosh and I'm broadcasting live on Periscope uh, for the hashtag Where I Write, which is a great campaign between Hachette Publishing and Twitter. So this is actually the second Where I Write video that I've done. I did it yesterday, it was great fun, but I had a bit of a technical fail at the end and uh, tapped twice or swiped twice or something and didn't save it, which meant no one could replay it. So I'm going to do it again and hope that um, this time I get it right. So the Where I Write campaign is all about writers showing you, uh, funnily enough, where we write, so giving you a little guided tour to our office. So you'd think, given that this was my second time of doing this, that I might actually get this right with no mistakes. Um, <laughs> thank you for that comment, Billie Jean, that's very nice of you. I'm now going to blush. Um, hi, Ings Co. What do I write? I write psychological thrillers. Um, and my book um, that's out at the moment, or just coming out in paperback, is called I Let You Go. So, let me start this. I'm just going to turn the camera around. I'm actually not in my office at the moment. I'm at the top of the stairs. Because my office is so tiny that I don't have room for everything. And so this bookcase should be in my office. And it's not. It's at the top of the stairs. And this is my bookcase of um, some of my favourite books that have come out recently and also a lot of books that I need to read. So this pile in particular, this stack here, uh, we've got books there. Um, we've got Jonathan Harvey's The Secrets We Keep, which looks amazing. Fiona Walker's The Woman Who, Fall, uh, Who Fell In Love For A Week. So I'm looking forward to reading all of those. Some of those are for events that I've got coming up and others are written um, by friends. So if I come up the steps, oh, and on the top here, we've got money boxes belonging to my children, which is useful if I run out of cash. So this is my office with my Enfant Terrible sign that I got for Christmas many years ago and a sign um, that says Mummy is home today that one of the kids made. So I'll take you into my office and you'll be able to see how small it is because literally I'm standing right in the middle of the room and I'll give you a, a really fast spin that's how small it is. I couldn't swing a cat in it. Uh, so I'm going to start over here. Um, and here's my wall planner where I uh, mark um, deadlines that I've got coming up. Um, and I also put on the word count. Thanks, Amanda. I won't get dizzy. The word count that uh, I, I need to do each month. So what are we there? So March, um, I had to get up to 20,000, which I did. Um, April, I've got to hit 40,000, uh, which I will do, I promise. Um, by the end of May, I'll be up to 70, so that's slightly more because I'm going on a writing retreat to the brilliant Chez Castillon then. Um, and then I will be finishing the first draft at the end of June, giving me July to edit. That's the plan anyway. So moving on here, this is my intro, which is full of boring things like bills and contracts and a short story that my son wrote me for Easter, uh, Red Herrings, which is the great magazine that the Crime Writers Association send out. I don't think there's anything particularly exciting in there. Book three, the very important notebook. Um, I've got my printer here, cupboards full of rubbish. Um, oh, Billie Jean, I do edit for longer than I write. It's just that that's a sort of a really quick edit before it goes to my uh, editor and then she'll give me some notes um, and then I'll spend probably six months or so editing. So don't worry, it will be better than, uh, than you think. Um, notebooks here. These are all notebooks of books that I've already written. There's another book three notebook there. Slightly alarming. I'm not quite sure why I've got two book threes. Um, so these are all full of rambles. This is a door that uh, I've never been able to fix. Um, must do something about that. Um, in here, um, I've got some promotional bookmarks for my book and also uh, a programme for Chipping Norton Literary Festival, which is the festival that I run um, and am in, which is quite exciting, along with some proper authors like um, Baroness Trumpington and Richard and Judy and Sheila Hancock, which is fantastic. So that's my storage round here. Not terribly exciting things up there. And then another bookcase here. And this bookcase is absolutely rammed. Everything is double stacked. 
uh, mostly crime up here. I read a lot of crime and psychological thrillers. And then this shelf um, and the books behind it, well look, I've got some secret guilty pleasures at the back. Jilly Cooper. Um, this is what we shouldn't really call women's fiction, but um, is sort of easy, a bit of an easy label to use. And then reference books down here, some of which um, I, are, are really precious to me. So these dictionaries, uh, French and German dictionaries, belong to my grandfather, as did these um, uh, refer these English dictionaries, which are really gorgeous to, to read, to really thin, thin pages. Um, needless to say, I don't use any of these reference books because I have uh, Google. Um, so they just sit there looking pretty, but they sort of, I find them quite inspiring. I've also on here got some of my childhood favourites. So Just William was an absolute passion of mine when I was a child. Uh, and I collected the whole set and then started, when I got a bit older, started collecting um, first editions, second editions, um, and just lovely old, oh gosh, old copies. Do you know I don't know what these are? And I can't really look with one hand. Some old photographs that are in this book, but I don't know if they're family photos or, um, or whether they've just been in the book since I bought it. I shall have to look into that later. I'm going to leave that out to remind me. Um, and then also here I've got my creative writing book from, can you see that? From autumn 1992, marked private. Um, and uh, it's a good job it's private, really, because it's full of the most pretentious uh, rubbish, um, uh, which is the sort of thing you write when you're 16, I guess. And then I've also got my diary from round about the same time from when I was doing my A-levels, which when I looked at the other day, I realised um, or remembered that I used to obsessively mark how much revision I did. So this this week, December 93, these little marks at the side um, crossing off, you know, four hours, five hours, only one on Thursday and then totaling 22 hours. So that's 22 hours of revision for my A-levels that particular week which um, I think probably was a bit excessive uh, and probably should have got more than an A and two Bs. Um, and then down here we've got copies of my book. So I'll just show you quickly the covers. This is the first cover uh, I had for my book, which was the trade paperback, which I really, really liked uh, and was quite excited about. And then when it came to the paperback, the cover changed to this, which is quite, quite different. Um, and when I first saw it, I have to be honest um, and say that it wasn't that I didn't like it. It was just that it was so different to the last one. I, um, I just felt a bit weird about it. And then, but now that I've had it for, for um, several months, I love it. And literally, I, I fell more and more in love with it. Um, and now I, you know, I wouldn't want to go back to the old cover. So it's funny how it sort of sometimes it takes a bit of time to get used to things. Uh, and then here, look, I didn't even put this away from my tour yesterday. These lovely um, postcards of old Ladybird books, which I like to send when I'm sending out my books to people as little thank you cards. OK, so moving on. This board here. Hi, Bob, clearly. Thanks for joining. This board here is my sort of personal family board. Lots of um, domestic stuff goes up there, along with photographs of my children. There they are and um, cards that people have sent me that I find, I was going to say inspirational, but actually there's nothing particularly inspirational about save water and drink champagne. Um, but this one's nice. Look, you're nothing short of brilliant. That came from my lovely mother-in-law. Um, and then we've got a picture of Paris, which is a place I lived for a couple of years. And a picture of me in a swimming costume, aged four. Um, moving on round... These are my working whiteboards, which are quite dull and not particularly creative, but really important to me. So the one at the top is all my events that I've got in the diary. And this is, is sort of starting to fill up quite nicely. So you'll see that for the, um, the next few months, I'm quite busy with various things. Uh, and then I've got nothing in September. Got the Isle of Wight Lit Fest in October, which is nice, and something in London as well, but nothing then 
for the rest of the, the autumn. So, you know, if you want to invite me to something, these are my good months. Um, and if there's cake, I'll be there. Then down here, uh, lots of deadlines of things that I've got to write this month. And then characters in my book, not all of them, but some key ones. And I have to write them down because otherwise I forget. And I have to write things like, um, I, just, I just write daughter's name in big capitals in my book and then come back to it. Terrible at remembering names, can't really get my own children's names right. Um, and also, bizarrely, someone's come into my office and turned my magnets into a question mark, which is a bit spooky. I hope that was one of the children. It hasn't just, I haven't got a poltergeist in my office. And then I've got some notes here from my editor uh, that I scribbled down when we met to talk about um, the first 20,000 words of the book that I'm writing. And a little Lego robot that someone's left there. Right, then moving on round, so we're at my desk now. This is where I sit in a really unattractive chair that's not very comfortable with a massive blanket because like all writers, I get freezing. So this is my desk, which I keep relatively tidy because I don't like distractions when I'm writing. Above my desk, I've got uh, an epaulette from my days in the police. This is my inspector's epaulette, uh, which sat on my shoulder. And that reminds me that I used to be called Mom, um, as opposed to just Mum. Put that back there. Uh, and that's sitting on top of a massive tube map, which isn't normally in my office, but is there for the duration of the book I'm writing now, because um, it's about London. It's set in London. It's largely set on the underground. Um, and you'll see that I've marked out some routes, although uh, I'm going to have to change these a little bit because I was thinking about Zoe, here we go, Zoe is one of my, what well, is my main character, um, and she, she lives at Crystal Palace and works in Cannon Street, but it occurred to me the other day when I had carefully mapped out her route um, that actually she probably wouldn't do that, and when I looked at this map and realised that perhaps she would go all the way up to Whitechapel um, and then come down on the district line rather than changing twice, or she might potentially, um, I don't know, walk from bank or anyway. So if you're a Londoner and you use the tube a lot um, and you can tell me how you would get from Crystal Palace to Cannon Street in the most efficient way, then perhaps let me know. Because at the moment I'm sort of looking at it from a tourist point of view and I need to be thinking London instead. So that'd be really helpful. So let me just sit at my desk and up here I've got, you can't really see it because it's all reflecting. I'm working on book three at the moment, oh, book two at the moment. So I'll just take that down and show you, this is my daughter and my dog there, show you what's on my desk here. So I've got, um, I've got a book here, uh, the little book of the London Underground, uh, which is a research book and I'm finding it very, very dull. Um, just to give you an example of some of the really interesting facts in this book, can you see that one there under S? St John's Wood is the only tube station on the entire network which uses none of the letters present in the word mackerel. There's a fact you never needed to know. Over here I've got some um, uncut editions of my book. So this is what they look like before they're trimmed. This one at the bottom is what it looks like before it's got a cover on. And then it ends up looking like that. And they're not always there, they're on my desk because I just uh, put a, a video on my YouTube channel of um, how the how books are made. And then here, in here, are all the sorts of things that um, I use for research. So they, I've got some magazines that I write for regularly, I've got some magazines that I want to write for, and I've got um, a number of copies of The Evening Standard because part of my book research involves looking at lots of these. And I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to why I do that. Right, that concludes the tour of my office. Um, again, hello. That concludes the tour of my office. Anyone who tuned in today who already saw it yesterday, I'm very sorry to have confused you. It's not deja vu. I really am doing it again because I forgot to save it yesterday so that it would be available on Periscope for replay. So I'm going to try and do that now. 
Thanks for tuning in again, and if you're watching it on replay, thank you for watching. I'm here as part of the hashtag Where I Write in conjunction with Hachette and Twitter. And if you look up the hashtag, you can find all sorts of brilliant, brilliant writers giving their guided tours of their office. So do take a look. Thanks for listening.